Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video we will be taking a look at the return of a starship and also the return of a mini starship, Lex, into Earth's atmosphere in an attempt to land it. Uh, not at Cape Canaveral or anywhere in particular, it's somewhere in Africa. Uh, here we are docking a lunar starship with its refueler, so the one with fins is the one refueling it, and the lunar starship will continue on to the moon to dock at our station around the moon. And here is the refueler starship deorbiting now using RCS, that takes a while. And now I don't have the fins in the way that SpaceX has the fins because while I can do that, I don't know how to tell Kerbal Space Program to control starship like that. Um, and I don't know what to do when it goes wrong. I, I don't have a firm grasp on how the control surfaces actually do their thing, basically. Or at least firm enough to um, make it happen. So, I've got actuating like this because I have some understanding of how this situation might be fixed if it goes wrong. Uh, hopefully that's clear. So, I just decided to aim for Africa because it's a huge place to land. Uh, but we were not quite making it to the coast, so I, I had to pitch down a bit to 30 degrees instead in order to get more lift, which was successful. It did extend our reach that way, and so we were able to successfully reach land. So yeah, we fell short. It got more drag than I was thinking it would. And uh, here you can see the fuel load right now, and the red dot is the center of mass and the blue dot is the center of lift. Interesting that the center of mass is behind the center of lift. I'm not too sure it's indicating quite right. Uh, these are the indicators from Mechjeb. Uh, well, right now, uh, it looks like it's right. <laughs> now it's flipping around the way you would expect if uh, the center of mass was in its location. Uh, actually, I had intended for the center of mass to be in front of the center of lift, and then I would use this descent mode to simulate the movement of fuel back from the header tanks and I'm moving the COM offset limit to move the, C uh, the center of mass back for the tail landing, but obviously it has flopped onto its tail way earlier than it was supposed to, and this is not as well controlled as it ought to be. So we will work on such things. Uh, now that I've seen how exactly SpaceX has done its be belly flop, obviously I'm producing this video after SN8 has done its thing, and uh, we have had experimental results of quite high quality compared to what I was expecting. Uh, they, it was a very successful experiment there. So uh, maybe I will be able to figure it out now, having seen what it does. Uh, sometimes you just really need to see it in action to get a firm grasp of things, instead of just imagining it. I decided that one problem was controlling from the forward-looking uh, direction, and so we've got that docking port on the tail. So I controlled from there and I'm manually handling it right now, and that seems to work better. It, it just really flops around a whole lot when controlling forward, uh, but not so much when controlling back. However, the fact that the docking port is offset, not centered, caused me problems for figuring out how to handle it right on landing. And so we ended up skewing one way. And when I tried to fix that, that didn't quite work out very well. So, I mean, I didn't really fit this with landing legs anyway. It was sort of a bonus thing, trying to get this right. Uh, trying to get this down into the atmosphere. And <laughs> that wasn't working very well either. Uh, 40 meters per second. Oh! It looks like the, the one fin sort of broke our fall, so we lost a fin, but it uh, cushioned the landing for us. I don't know. So we've got a beach whale situation here in Africa. Uh, well, I mean, at least it survived, sort of. Next up is the mini starship, Lex. Now this is my own design, so I took liberties as far as the fin configuration and also the landing legs. We actually have five landing legs, those are Falcon 9 style. Uh, it's a temporary thing. It only has one Raptor vacuum in the tail, as you can see. It's 6.6 .6 meters in diameter. It has crew, though, uh, one of whom is a paying tourist. This is part of the Solar System Tourism series. It would occur very, uh, very far ahead of where we are in the series as far as the YouTube videos I'm producing, so that's why I'm doing this right now. Uh, you can see the center mass is in front of the center of lift here, but perhaps a little bit too far in front, but we'll see. So going through the atmosphere, 
you can see uh, the instability often, even with the shuttle, if you have problems with the shuttle, will occur around 50 to 60 kilometers. And so that's the most troublesome region for things. Now, that's one thing the Starship test obviously didn't test. It didn't come down from that kind of height. Uh, but well, I guess we'll see that eventually, and I'm sure, given how well they did on uh, the whole belly flop thing and uh, turning to the tail, I have more confidence that they figured out how it, how this whole control scheme works going through the troublesome region. Now, uh, this Lex uh, did very well during that troublesome region, partly because I've added those vertical stabilizers. Uh, that helps with the yaw. But here we've got a very persistent roll situation, if you know it, which is weird. And it's uh, increasingly using the pitch, and there is also a little bit more of yaw. We only have very small uh, vertical stabilizers after all. Uh, it suddenly maxed out the pitch. I think, I think I was trying out descent mode on the forward portion. There are two separate descent modes, one on the forward portion and one on the rear tanks. So I was trying out one, I was messing about, I think. I, it was pretty close to stalling though, so there was that. I think it might have just stalled at that point. We should have pitched down or something. And so we ended up in a flat spin, and I decided that the best thing to do eventually, as I couldn't seem to get it to the retrograde node very easily, the retrograde vector, is to use its parachutes, because Lex unlike Starship, has a full abort system. It's got a decoupler between the forward uh, payload slash uh, personnel section and the tanks in the back. It also has thrusters uh, in... Uh, they're identical to the Lunar Starship thrusters, the ones that are placed just under the forward canards. And so we've got all that going for us. So we're going to use the parachutes to hopefully keep ourselves oriented properly. We've got the landing legs out and we'll use the landing thrusters, not the single Raptor vacuum, in order to do the final touchdown. The parachutes would be strong enough for just the passenger portion, the forward pod, but with the whole tank and engine in the back and the additional control surfaces and everything, it's that's a bit hefty for it, so it won't be a safe speed on touchdown with all of that. So we can see full deployment at one kilometer and we are at 13 meters per second uh, which is above the... I mean it, it's a toss-up what's safe exactly but generally you want it under six meters per second and 12 is pushing it. So here we're using those thrusters on the side which should be used as landing thrusters on the moon as well for, uh, for the lunar starship. Not for this one, of course. But I decided to use the same thrust and same uh, quality engines that would have to be doing that on the moon uh, to be the abort system here. But it can also be used as a landing system just like Super Draco's. So I recovered that and that was... Well, it's not exactly how I wanted it to go. But, you know, as long as we didn't kill anybody, I suppose. Uh, so that left Lunar Starship to do its transfer. It didn't have enough to go straight to the surface because I only did one refueling. I wanted to test out the refueling and um, we had a whole bunch of interesting issues with that. So I decided to dock it to what serves as the Lunar Gateway here. And that's a USI module in front. That's not part of the regular Lunar Gateway setup. It's actually the two modules behind it that are part of the regular Lunar Gateway, but they're awful small. That's the Halo and PPE uh, modules that I have there, which I had uh, made models of. I've done a video on those, so that, that's what I'm pointing out right there. That's, that's all of Lunar Gateway, those two modules. Um, other modules might be added, but those are the core modules. So you can see how large Lunar Starship is compared to those planned modules. And I've got a truncated version of the National Team Lander dock to it. Anyway, so that is in honor of SN8's successful experiment. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.